quickly, but I had it set for 910. Hello again. <clears throat> Y'all get ready to tune on in. You know what we need to do? We really need to share this, my friend. I know sometimes people say that ain't professional. We should have it pre-prepared. Unfortunately, that's not what we were able to do. That's not what we did, but we still can share this, my friend. So take a second to share it to your page and all your groups that you tagged in, and I'm going to do the same thing too. And uh, we're going to make this platform grow, me and you. I know we asked the people to tune in, but we're going to tune out too. That's what we do, right? We connectors. You can't hear me, can you? No, I can hear you, but it's just very faint. I'm, I'm getting to, um, getting some these ear, earbuds put in, seeing if that'll help me out. Oh, okay, because you are pretty low. But anyway, hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Big Sarge, large and in charge of my one and only self, taking myself up off the shelf, looking to discover my greatest internal and external wealth so I can be the best version of myself. You got to do the same for yourself, too. That's what we all called to do. I'm just here with Whiskey Charlie to share it with you because that's what we do. We grunt speak. We speak to you. You speak to us, too. Grunts, and we help each other get through and we help our families get through. That's what we called to do. So me and Whiskey Charlie, we want to speak to you. This may not be for your kids, but they'll be blessed by this if they listen a little bit too. So you know what we do, 11 Brick, 11 B, 11 Charlie, 11 Alpha 2, 03 11. Do what we do, speak grunt. Whiskey Charlie, what's been going on with you? Uh, you know, not a whole lot. Just, I hear yeah. you. Yeah. All right, but uh, no, just, uh, just work, man. Uh, work and work and work and, uh, you know, the kid's been sick uh, this week, so just, uh, you know, just helping uh, with the wife as much as I can. And then uh, they went and they went to Houston last week uh, and uh, spent some time down there for uh, my daughter's spring break. So, of course, I just worked because I couldn't get it off. Yeah, I like that sweatshirt you got. Yeah, it got it for... It, man, it makes yeah, you look, it makes you look pretty jacked. Like you've been working out. Like it's the muscles up under there. <laughs> this is work. I'm gonna work out. I be doing. <laughs> no, nah, man, it's because you. I I don't know if I should be saying this, but I'm gonna say it, and it's whatever, man. It's because you be slagging all that wood at Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't work that hard anymore. I, I used to work a hell lot harder, but uh, I come to realize I, I got to learn my role. <laughs> learn to delegate? Yeah, I, I work my ass off too much. And, uh, well, I used to work my ass off too much. I, I've, I've got more into my role, but I still help support when it's needed. Yeah, so are you on the floor a lot? Or are you more? Um... I'm on the floor. <laughs> You're on the I'm floor. On the floor. What yeah, you, I don't. What exactly do you do as an assistant manager at Home Depot? Because I don't know. So when I think about it, and I go into Home Depot, I see a bunch of people with orange shirts that I just ask, "Hey, where's this tool at?" And usually somebody can assist me. Yeah. No. What uh, do you do as an assistant manager? How do you fit into that fold? So my, my job is to oversee what's going on and making sure people are you know, in in their aisles or in their departments, make sure things are uh, get help from customers and or uh, packing down, putting the stuff on the shelf for the customers to do what they need to. And then uh, strategically planning, you know, sets and stuff like that. So when it comes around to certain things have to be said, I have to, you know, walk with the supervisors and get them into the area where they need to be, and get things placed out by the company's, uh, the way the company wants it. So rolling out with their certain plays and things like that. So I got to help set up all that. And then of course, hold people accountable. Uh, and things on, along that nature. Mm hmm. How many people are up under you? 180. How many shifts is that? How many? They're on different shifts, or how does that work out? Oh yeah. Playing? Yeah, they're different shifts. Uh, there's 180 associates in the store. Uh, there's about 13 departments. There's eight supervisors. So, so for your uh, store, your your second in command. 
Uh, I mean, there's there's technically, I guess you could say, uh, five ASMs in the building, four four ASMs and two uh, other salary member management. They're not ASMs. They're CXMs, but so there's four other uh, there's four others other than well, well, me and three others. Okay. Okay, I get it. I'm I'm looking at it and I'm painting it in a picture of speaking the grunts because I didn't understand, but I understand. So you're an assistant manager, then there's two store managers there, but it's four assistant managers, right? Uh, there's only one store manager. There's okay, only so one store manager. Oh, so there's only one store manager there, and then it's four assistant managers. Yeah. Cool. So what that says to me is y'all yeah. got y'all got a battalion commander and you a captain because you got 180 people up under you. That's like a company. Yeah, you can go that way with it. Well, that's the way I understand it. I understand exactly what you're saying, but so you're in charge of 180 yeah, but people, but you're on the you're a you're not a battalion commander. You're you're either a captain or you are a first sergeant because you're still in the field but you just don't have to do the heavy lifting anymore yeah pretty much you can say a first sergeant because then i got uh i've got my own supervisor so uh each in, in the store it's broke down per operations merchandising and specialty so i'm over top of merchandising and i've got six departments what what departments fall under merchandising is that a well i did ask it so when you say merchandising, is that like selling the drills, the tools, the generators, or is that like lumber? What does that what does that consist of? Oh, you are froze up. It looked like you were just down in the beer, brother. Uh oh, I think we losing Whiskey Charlie. Whiskey Charlie, you with me? Yeah, I hear you. Can you see me? There you go. We got action again. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got a bad uh, storm blowing in. We got a bad storm blowing in, so it could be fucking with my internet. Ah. Okay. Okay. What? No hurricanes, is it? Nope. It's the change in the weather. That's all it is. Anytime it goes to change the weather, it's gonna throw some some shit out there. So. I think Monday, Monday night's supposed to be the worst. They're calling uh, already four tornadoes. For Monday night? Yeah, Monday night. Monday night into uh, Tuesday. They said for like 12 at night, 5 in the morning. If it comes, it'll be not out. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm asking for a manager this week. Say that again. I'm acting store manager this week. Oh, you're acting store manager this week. I'm gonna hang up on you and call you back. All right. Or I could wait it out in with you in the foxhole. That's how technology do to you. You're attempting to build something and then the storm come through. Now nah, look, it's just me and you. But he'll tap back in soon too. But what do we wanted to go with? where? Where we looking to go tonight before I start asking Whiskey Charlie about his life? But it was very interesting, right? A good NCO supposed to know his soldiers, right? That's what they say. How do you learn your soldiers? You ask questions. How do you learn your family? You ask questions. My son was just asking me some questions when I came home today. I ask my kids questions when I pick them up from school sometimes. What did you learn? What did you teach? What did you learn? What did you teach? And I remember being an NCO, I was always supposed to know jobs two levels above me, even, even as a soldier, right? Now, the world is starting to open up again, my friend. Definitely, definitely down here in Austin and probably sure in different parts of where you live too. Your land, Cleveland, Florida land, the, the bluegrass state land, wherever you land, right? Or see, I think that's my wife getting ready to come past me. But the world is opening up right now again. I was out earlier doing some lift out here in Austin for South by Southwest and for St. Patrick's Day. 
I thought it would be a good a good way to earn some extra money and then uh, just connect with people because that's what I like to do. So see how how the world was opening up, what people were up to, what the energy was like, what people was feeling like. And it was uh, uplifting, too. It's like when you doing the movement. And everybody make it through and, you know, with some tough obstacles that you had to go through, you know, just just paint a different view. So going out there in Austin, it was pretty cool to see that the world was opening up and it changed my view. You know, I'm up here in the suburbs. You know how they do. Nine o'clock, everything shut down. That's my wife was just up to going to get some junk fast food because sometimes we don't have a plan too. And we not wor- we not ready for when things open up around you. Just just hear me out. The question is, the world is well. The statement is, the world is opening up. Are you ready for it? Hey, Whiskey Charlie. Yeah. You have you you have you anyway. Oh, is that what it sound, sound like? Yeah, you sound like a little rowdy right, way. So. Oh, I can't. Yeah, damn. That. I can't be doing that. Anyhow, now the whiskey Charlie's back for a while. I was talking about our topic. The world is opening up, and are you ready for it? And uh, how you prepare for it. Or we can continue to talk about what you do with the Home Depot crew because I know that was interesting to me. I'm pretty sure the people that was viewing was interested too. But anyway, it's really up to you. So, you know, up. I guess it's just me and you. Whiskey Charlie is going again. Shh. Talking to my friend. The world is opening up, and is Whiskey Charlie coming back? Whiskey Charlie, whiskey, whiskey Charlie, whiskey Charlie. I mean, I need a calm guy. <laughs> you definitely need a calm guy. Where the fuck is Tom? Is man? <laughs> He's at Coyote Ugly DJing for South by Southwest this week. Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah, yeah, he's down there DJing, man. He's he's a very talented guy. He just got he um recently he set up a a hip hop show for Little Flip where he did the stage, the lighting, the TV screens. He did everything. Damn, pretty cool. Yeah, so. He's down there on 6th Street doing his thing right now. But I know he'll probably be. We did some work the other day. I went by his house and was able to do some uh, inspirational speaking, Mr. Peen stuff we recorded to release to just, it was cool. We had a good moment. It was a grown man moment that we was able to have. Like talked about some real man, grown up stuff, some PTSD stuff, some family stuff. So he's doing good. We, It was dope. He, he definitely he definitely is watching and he'll be back he'll be back yeah uh, I actually uh met up with a guy at work the day before yesterday uh that uh, had been deployed eight times Ooh. eight times yeah oh yeah God, and, uh, yeah he had uh he had a definitely experienced uh the PTSD and stuff like that so Ooh. I talked to him for a while yeah deployed eight times. I was like, wow, I don't know. What was he in? What branch? Uh he was in the army. Ranger? Uh uh-uh. uh. He uh man, I, I I forgot what exactly he said his MOS was, but he, he pretty much uh uh deployed out with anybody and everybody. Mm-hmm. I guess he was back to back to back, like kept on him. <laughs> I don't know how he did it, because uh then he ended up uh finally after you know, after all the deployments, whatever else, he ended up uh not he didn't medically get out. He just got out of I guess active medically, and then he was uh, he went to reserves and was like a pretty much I guess you could say readiness NCO type deal. Forgot I forgot the details, but yeah, man, it was pretty crazy, pretty uh, pretty nice guy, nice guy. And he's actually a nonprofit organization. He goes out and helps rebuild uh, veterans' homes. 
Thank you, baby. Can I have some ketchup? Do we have some? My wife just gave me some fat boy fries. It's like yeah. a deploy, it's like a deployment night. <laughs> yeah. My but he, he actually he's a part of this nonprofit that actually helps out veterans uh, rebuild their houses. Like during these last couple of years of storms and stuff like that, he's actually the lead guy that goes out there and uh, helps build back. He uh, did uh, Vietnam vets house and stuff like that with with no money from the Vietnam vet. He took it from it. He took it from his own personal 401 to help this guy out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, you meet pretty interesting people at Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, at my place of business as well. But how do we connect with somebody like that and support that? Because that's what Grunt Speak is all about anyway. Speak, Grunt about it all anyway, you know, helping veterans get through. So how do we get a part of something like that? Just even if, and I know you go out and do that stuff at Home Depot, so that wouldn't be a stretch for you. It would be a different vibe for me, but. I know it would be cool because I would be helping people in the months of community. So how would we go about it, attaching ourselves and being of service to something like that to give back? And at the same time, you know, it gets us out there too. Yeah. Everybody benefits, but it's allowing us to do what we talk about doing, going to help other veterans too. Of course, yeah, it'll no, be something we have to plan, but how do we go about doing that? Yeah, no, he, uh, already linked up with him. He added us and then I'm good. We're, I'm supposed to go in there and find him and add his page of, of what he does and stuff like that. So he's already added us. He's supposed to be, uh, he'll probably be on here watching us tonight. Well, that's pretty cool. That's all right there. <sighs> How I many of them have you had today? Uh, one, this is the only one. That's all you get for the day. Well, look, I, I've been, trying to uh do better you know try to do better every year and i try to limit myself to a certain amount so i ain't drunk all the time i give it a certain time window so it's about you know you're st restraining yourself to a certain extent i guess you could say and knowing your limits uh i don't want to be going to bed at five o'clock in the middle of the day because i drank too many and i'm passing out so try to limit myself and put it at a better time you know and try to uh focus more on other things like my kids, my wife, and stuff like that. So, you know, you got to prioritize self-discipline. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I get it. I haven't had any alcohol this year. I, I take I take my medicine, though. I take my, yeah. uh, my CBD. <laughs> I take my medicine, you know? So I definitely get it because you have to you have to regulate it. And yeah. sometimes it can have, you know, you do it for whatever reason you do it. I think a lot of times for me, I would do it to hide behind something that I'm really feeling or a pain that I'm feeling and not really wanting to live in that moment of reality or something like that. You do it for a multitude of reasons. Sometimes you do it to have fun. Sometimes you do it to free and relax yourself. You just do it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's almost a part of you now. But then you understand that you're doing it to a point where it has more control over you than you have over it. You're not ready to let it go all the way completely, but we understand that we have to regulate it and we can control it. It just takes us, like you said, that discipline and that consistency. And then it's like, what are you doing it for? Or who are you doing it for? As they say, what is your why? You know, like when we is in the military, if you ask anybody that's been overseas and deployed, any soldier will tell you he wasn't doing it for the government. He wasn't doing it for the politics. He was doing it for his brother to his left and his right. That's why he made those sacrifices. And so what you saying that I, I completely understand that I wasn't I don't think you I don't know how you took it. If you took it in any way, it was just really a question like, wow, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the way you explained it, it was like, wow, that's powerful. Because I remember all the things we talked about. So you would walk and live an example, both of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that that's real. And that's why the question came about, about how do we help that other, that veteran. So that's pretty dope, man, because well, it's I all also, a part of growth. I also owe it to uh, to my wife. You know, she she's the one that also helped open my eyes. And that's what, uh, you know, with... Uh, with drinking she opened my eyes hey look you're out you know she always used to tell me hey you're out by like four or five o'clock you know or hey you were acting stupid at you know noon 
you had too many, you know, and then my tolerance level started going up and man, I was spending too much money. I was putting down, you know, 12, 18 pack in a day and just barely getting hammered. So again, it's about limiting and knowing, knowing your limits on that stuff. Right. So that's why I had to take, you know, take this step back and like, okay. And see, see, you know, reality set in. And then it's just like one of those things is like, okay, you know, I, I don't need to be th- this stupid. I, if, I, if I'm going to get drunk, you know, take it slow, take it slow and steady and know your limits. So that's, that's just one of the big things that, it's because of her. Uh, it's because of her to help open my eyes. And then, you know, and that's what also, again, like you were saying earlier, man, that's what kind of our show is about. You know, you, uh, you may know you have, or you may know that you're, you may not know that you're, you know, in the phase of needing help or whatever else, but you know, we're out here speaking just to let you know, uh, take our advice, however you want to, uh, or, you know, take our, I guess our mission statement, I guess you could say, uh, and, uh, take it and use it to your advantage and just listen and maybe maybe it'll help you out better that's what it, uh, what I could say for it that's it man it's all a part of growing and getting better we can't ask we I cannot ask anybody to hold themselves accountable if I'm not holding myself accountable yeah well I believe that, I, was, I was talking to you earlier about me and Tom Ayers talking and mm-hmm. even on my Facebook page my Mr. Payne page I was having a real vulnerable moment like a real open moment and i had to be real with myself talking to time as like a lot of people know me but a lot of people don't really know me like i struggle with things as well but i find a way to get through you know yeah. what i'm saying and i can't say that to you if you're not doing it for you i cannot ask you to believe in you if i don't believe in myself too because we can get in a character and put on this show but then you have to slow down and face your reality like no this isn't helping me this this isn't good for me so once you take control of that thing then it's it comes off easily and building with guys like you and Tom as and building with like, I'm sitting here eating French fries and I'm thinking in my mind, I know I've watched certain classes and I've not studied certain things from my coaching perspective. And you probably shouldn't be eating while you're doing the show, but I'm like, no, this is who I am. This is what grunts do. I would be sitting in the field eating with my food, just not chewing my, I'm talking to a specific demographic. So yeah. I can do me. Now, somebody on my business page might not understand that or like that, yeah. but that's okay. That's their perspective. Yep. Friends that you used to drink with, friends that we used to go shoot with, friends that we used to go talk army with might not be ready to change when we're ready to change. Like people, the, the topic, the world is opening up. Some people not ready for the world to open up. They want to stay on Zoom. Some people couldn't wait to get out. Texas is one of the first states to do away with Corona masks. Yep. Yep. But I think it's also one of the things that, uh, you know, I, you know, I kind of said earlier, but it's, it's all about self-discipline, right? Self, you know, you always gotta, at the end of the day, man, it's, you can point your finger at so many people or so many things of why things are going incorrect or the way you feel like your life is going, but you, you can initially, uh, you gotta look at yourself on any type of blame, right? You, you can put, there could be a hundred blames on everybody else, but it's going to be like 200 blames on you because you accepted every factor that got you that that way mm-hmm. you gotta really step back and say hey you know what i'm doing this wrong how can i go about this another way i ain't saying that you're that you you know you're doing it wrong way and you're just stuck there you're not you're not stuck there that's that's a, that's a self uh self uh mind piece that's telling you that you're stuck there. you're not stuck there there's alternate routes of anything in life that you can go that, that you're going through that you can find a different route to go oh absolutely Absolutely. You just have to be willing to take a chance on yourself with it, though. Yeah, that's all. But that's one of the most difficult things. It's so interesting. I was watching a movie the other day on my wife's birthday called Dog with Channing Tatum. It was a dope movie, too, by the way. It's supposed to be like a comedy. I don't know. But it was it was good to me and it was good for the family. Right. In this movie, he was a a ranger. I don't really remember why he got out because I was late. You know, the big Sarge was not on time for real, for real. So anyhow, don't miss the point. Um, He was out of the Rangers, but his buddy called him. They called him and let him know that one of his best friends had, had passed away. So he went to the funeral and everybody was in uniform, but he wasn't. And he was asking the captain to get back in because they was friends. But he told him he wasn't making a call. But then the very next day, he came and found him where he was at. Drunk, still at the bar, gave him a mission. Get the dog, Lulu, 
which was a dog that worked with the Rangers. So I would say protection dog, canine dog, attack dog. She was a teammate. She was trained to kill, eat, eat, what, what you would do in special operations, right? Her owner passed away, killed himself doing a buck 20, I think, on a motorcycle in a car up against the tree. And what was, I don't remember the ranger's name. Babe, you remember the ranger's name in the movie from Dog? Maybe his name was Dog. You do you do you remember the ranger's name in Dog? Anyhow, he had to take care of Dog, which was Lulu, his buddies dog and by himself with the dog he had a lot of anger and rage but he encountered another ranger who had a rescue dog that was a killer as well had her own i love me book had three dvds of her greatest hits and her greatest hits was chowing down on what we would call at that time uh we would use the terminology of haji during those times. Now, right now, I'm not using that, but I, I said it, but anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> take it how you want to take it. Big Sarge, large and in charge of my one and only self. Get it how you live. Buy grunts, fuck grunts. So anyhow, point I was attempting to make. He had to come with reality, huh? Yes, his name was Briggs. Thank you, wife. Briggs had got put out of the Rangers for some reason. And he thought that his captain could make a call for Triple Canopy to get him a contractor's job. Typical, probably army guy life. Super stud, but family not right. Shot up, beat up, don't want to, you know, move on. Now you got to take care of somebody you never had to, which is the dog who is crazy too. And the dog helped you grow you, but it was in him by himself and, and getting around other people who was like, no, you have to learn how to let go and love a little bit. You have to learn how to accept the world for where it's at. You have to learn how to, you know, let go. And it was very interesting at the end of the show because the whole mission for him was to drop the dog off, take it to the funeral so the family could see it at his buddy who passed away. Um funeral so they can see the family so they can see his dog his partner after he took it to the funeral the mission was to drop it off at an army base because it was probably going to be euthanized hmm. he did the mission but when he got there to have the dog euthanized with a series of events that took place and him getting the dog from point a to point b he practically fell in love with the dog and grew up and he couldn't allow the dog to let go. He couldn't let the dog go to be euthanized. So he adopted it. Mm. But it was in that time of being by himself that he learned himself and he had to learn to depend on someone else. And he had to do it for something bigger than himself. You just said, I'm putting a little bit of alcohol on the shelf. I have my one, but I see my wife in them in a different way the, the world, my world, this world, it's opening up in different ways. Are you ready to step through it? I call it jumping season. It's like when airborne, I'm not airborne nor I'm a ranger, but I'm I'm pretty sure even if you a skydiver, I'm pretty sure there's a time where it's the right season to jump. Like it, it just feels right. The air is right. It's just like it's a good season for shooting. It's a good season for football. If you come from a certain part of the state, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. this was that 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 season for him for for briggs it was jumping season time to go to the next level and we are talking about the same thing our worlds is opening up in a different way it's that 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 really taking responsibility for what you're asking other people to do and checking yourself knowing you couldn't be hypocritical yeah, you, you got to be yourself's biggest critic, though, too. I mean, you have to, but it's day, difficult, it, too. 
Yeah, it is. It is. But same time as uh, I, I know every day I leave, uh, like I tell my boss, every time I leave work, man, the first thing that comes to my mind is I do everything I needed to do. Now, I guess Here's that's the just. Thing. Here's the thing. Here's what I would say. If you know you did everything that you needed to do, why do you even have to ask that question? Yeah. That just guess, means. It, yeah. It, here's the thing. I'm so, in my mind, the way I'm beginning to see it, I'm so understanding now that the most important moment of my life is that very present moment that I'm in. That me talking to you right now. Because what happened before this, I can't do anything about And I could die right here as I'm speaking out of my mouth. I don't know when it ends. I think I believe that I got all this time and tomorrow I'm going to be at work. I think I believe that I'm going to kick you in the door and I'm going to shoot a couple people and the mission going to be over. I think and I believe I'm going to drive back to the five, but then I get flipped over in the Humvee. I think and I believe a lot of things, but I don't know when it's going to end for me. So it's like if I know I did the best that I could do while I was there, why don't want to leave there? When I leave there, because now when I'm going home, I could be getting my mind right for I had an awesome day at work. I kicked butt. I did everything that I could do. Now I'm going to go home and give my wife this two hours, this three hours of energy, too. And then I'm going to give me a good hours of sleep because I know that I did the best that I could do. I don't even have to question it. Because the results is showing it. It's, it's, it's just like. It's a, it's a buddy of mine who's a coach, and I believe he uses a term sometimes about earning his death. It's like sometimes when you're using the infantry, regardless to what you want to say about an MRE, it was some days you know you earned that MRE and you was looking forward to it because the Army had put you through some stupid and, and, some, and some stuff, and you couldn't wait to eat that MRE. <laughs> as long as Chili Mac, I'm good. I, I yeah. just can't eat. Whatever it was for you, that's that's that was uh the big wolf one too, Chili Mac. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, hunt you down for that Chili Mac. But anyhow, again, you don't have to ask the question when you know you've already completed the mission. You, you get what I'm saying? If you know you gave it your best, celebrate that you gave it your best, and then the next day just keep celebrating the fact that you gave it your best. Set a schedule for what you want to do. You already know. You said you got to delegate more to your crew. You need to walk around, figure out how much time you're going to walk around and then go back to the office and learn something too. You probably could do that for you. Watch from a different view. You get to schedule that too. And then when you do that, what that, what that does for you, it gives you a different view. You're not, you're no longer asking, did I do everything that I could do? You're now saying, I did everything that I set out to do for my day. And that's when we really start to see ourselves and start to see life in a different way. Yeah, I got you. Definitely understand that. Yeah. That's it. I'm 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 telling you. So I'm not saying that something wrong with that's your way of processing asking, did I do everything I could do? Don't. Don't put the unnecessary thought process when you know you're doing the best that you could do or you wouldn't be in a position you in to do. Yeah. Celebrate that part of you. Set out what you want to do next, how you want to build. You know what? what? What will give you something to you? Who's in a position to look in? The, who looks up to you? Who, not in a disrespectful way, who uh, aspires to be or do what you do? mentor somebody groom you like somebody did for you that'll yeah. give you a different view a different way of look at it it's bigger than you it's not about what you can do no more what can you teach somebody else to do when you elevate somebody here's the thing you have to work yourself out of a job if you're gonna stay at home depot another 10 years while you build a business on the side i would say read this book called the nine to five millionaire by jamal king It's a very powerful book you should definitely get that book and read it or find it on audio book don't tell me you don't read because i know you know how to read you're an assistant manager at home depot change your life anyhow if you're gonna be at home depot the next 10 years you don't want to stay a specialist forever you yeah. might as well get the extra bump because you just in interviewed for a different position not too long ago. 
So you got to you got to build your replacement. You have to find an individual in there who who can do the job the the way that you feel like you feel about Home Depot, who 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 you believe could do the job, who you could groom, who has potential, a little rough around the edges like you might have been. You need to groom them to take your job so you can prepare for the next job. If you're going to be there the next 10 years, you're yeah. a very young man. There's no need for you to keep going through the grinder. So you find your replacement. Now you're doing a store and you can help even more people the way you want to. And you're a veteran. We just have to see it with a totally different view. Then you can spend way more time with your wife too. We yeah. supposed to work easier as we get as we get older. That's why we have a different view. That's it. That's why people tell us we need to learn how to delegate because me and you, we like to we like to do. We like to lead from the front. We like to do, and then we expect you to do it the way I might have it because this is my view. This is what I was taught. This is how I do it. This is how I get down. So I feel like you should do it like this way too. No. That's not how everybody see their view. Some people need a schedule say, okay, how much time do I need to get this done? Oh, I just need to put you right here because I know if I put you here to move these locks and keys, they're going to be absolutely in the right order by number. They're going to be absolutely right, but it's going to take you six hours to do it. It will be done right, but you'll be right here. You know what I'm saying? But I can yeah. pick another individual who can work in multiple places. You're going to get it done quick. I can move him around. He's going to complain a little bit, but he can work in multiple areas. It's just different ways to different use, use people. And you have to know how to use to, to help use their gift. I'm just using your gift, what I know you got. You connect with people. You good energy. You're a good leader, but you're growing to the next level. You love, not love. You enjoy working for Home Depot and doing what you're doing and being an effective part in the community. That's your energy connected to a, a, a grand name that's a respectable name that does well in the community. It's almost like being in the army. I'm serving. I'm still serving. But now as a man, you understand I could go higher. And in order for you to go higher, you're going to have to find your replacement. Here's the thing. I'm leaving my job at, uh, I resigned from my job as a um, community manager at T-Works Coworking where I do a lot of social media marketing. I do a lot of scheduling and booking, booking, and I learn. I am I'm learning the back end process of being an entrepreneur from a gentleman who's an entrepreneur who's been doing financial, financial work planning. The dean, the Charles Schwabs, and all those Fidelity Investment Group, you know, for maybe thirty five years who's yeah. probably, I don't know, 15, 20 years, my senior former army ranger, like a very credible individual. And I'm, and I'm learning all these things and I've learned all these things over the last years. And it's put me in a, a, a position of connecting with individuals and building relationships with individuals who believe in what we're doing, what I'm doing, my gift that I have. And I'm, and I'm learning so much from, right. But an opportunity opened up for me to, to do something that I never thought I would do, and that's sell state farm insurance, sell insurance, period. I don't see me as a salesman at all. I don't, I'm, I never saw myself as a salesman. I just don't believe that's what I do. Because you know? I always, I look at it from a money standpoint. I only see like people think sales, they think money, and I'm not about money like that. But what I do have, is I have the gift to persuasively inspire, I would say. Yeah. I definitely and if you can listen to what an individual wants and you can persuasively inspire, like I just believe I was doing with you, what I see for you and how you're going to move to the next level, if you can persuasively inspire, then you can sell. Now everybody's like, oh, that, and when I say that to people, okay, what I was talking about was having somebody replace you. Stay with me now. When I say that to people, having somebody replace you, you are building up the individual to take your position so you can move on. I went to go see about my life insurance. My dad just passed away. We know that things ain't the best. But I want to go see about my life insurance to really figure out for my family for when my time comes. 
And in that process of me going to see about my life insurance, I've talked to my rep once or twice before. I go into the office and on his office, it's like his, his army plaques from being a PFC in the infantry, airborne, you know, air assault, all those good things. And I'm like, oh, interesting. Then when I meet him, he's actually, you know, now a major in the reserves and been doing this for like 14 years. We're just having a good conversation. And before I know it, I had a job offer for being a good salesman. And, and the part of me <clears throat> didn't want to leave where I was at because I had built a team. I, I, I was a team, part of a team and growing in a different way. But I knew in order for me to go to the next level, <clears throat> to grow as a coach, to grow as a consultant, as the the vision, the, the the businessman I know I can be from my persuasive inspiration, my own version of me, in order for me to do that, I have to learn how to really sell. Everybody's always selling. You're looking to get better to sell yourself, present yourself to Home Depot that you're worthy for more responsibility. That's it. We sell ourselves to our wives, look at me to be attracted. Women, not in a, like that, a, 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 a horrific way, take it how you want to take it. Everybody sells. The army sells to your mind for guns, bullets, and stuff when you're kids. Like, everybody's selling, right? It's, it's, it's just, it is what it is. So in that process of you selling to yourself to, to get uh, I lost my point a little bit, but I'm trying to think about it. But anyhow, <laughs> no, seriously. Um, when I did lose my point, I just, yeah. I just have to be honest. You were, sell you were selling yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> selling. So again, to persuasively inspire, I've met some people. I didn't want to, right. I met some people. I didn't want to leave. I had to find my replacement. My wife replaced me. I'm training my wife to take my position to replace me. And I'm going to go learn to sell insurance, life insurance, something that I had to go learn for me and get a better understanding. Now, I'm going to be able to help other people do it for themselves because I know a lot of other people don't understand it. But because I was in my feelings, I didn't want to leave my team. But once my replacement was presented before me, it was easier for me to elevate and everybody understands. When you find your replacement and they see that you had somebody who can do what you do and has the potential to outgrow what you've grown, they have no problem with letting you move on because then they know you, do, you understand the process of growing the business. You have to be able to remove yourself a business supposed to run itself. A business is a, a configuring of a configuring of systems that begin to automate themselves. You have to be able to remove yourself. That's it. That's what most businessmen want. You're you're a creative. You're a thinker. I heard a guy said, "I'm I'm professionally lazy." Best term I heard all week. <laughs> professionally lazy. Why? Because a lazy person will always find the easiest, quickest, fastest way to get something done. And if you're in business, that's what you want, just with a quality product. That's why we like Amazon. Yeah. Boom, it's right there. You order today, it's there tonight. Yeah, it's true. That's it. It's a sale. I can get it Con to you faster than anybody. Convenience. Convenience convenience that's why they call gas station convenience stores convenience <laughs> you'll pay right more there. but you'll, you'll get what you want right the thing. if if and here's the thing convenience can be looked at in so many ways if you always there you're not really that important to me yeah you just so i'm looking at it from a uh, okay a tool, a, a tool standpoint for me, how I see it for big corporation business. If I'm always there, you're really not that important to me because you don't see a bigger vision. The CEO ain't never really in the office. He's always out making deals and growing the business. 
if you always there, how are you growing a business? Yeah. So if you convene and you always there, you're not really that important to me. I need to see that you can manage more without being there. Yeah. When you find your replacement, that's letting people know, okay, he probably want a little more. I can go get a little bit more. For me, it's a standpoint of wanting more. I know I have to learn how to sell my sell my gift, not myself, my gift. We all have a gift. This is my gift to per, to 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 articulate, speak words, whatever you want to call it, persuasively inspired. That's why I was good as a sergeant. I wasn't the most technical. I wasn't the best shooter. I wasn't a PT stud, but I always had a relationship with soldiers. I could always do this. And for some people, I was a shit hot sergeant because I was consistently passing everything. That's all. That's it. But it was always a sale for myself because I didn't want to be a shit bag. So if you consistent and you always there, I don't need you like that. But if you show me that not consistent, but if not, not, not consistent, that wasn't the word that I used. Um, convenient. If you're always there, I start to look, I start not to appreciate you so much because I can always get you. Yeah. It's like being in Iraq in 2006, getting free Gatorades and Rippets and all that Red Bulls and stuff till your life was about to be over and bullets and stuff. And then in 2009, 2010, it wasn't so convenient. You had to pay for it and you weren't getting none of that stuff free no more. A little bit. It wasn't so convenient. You were disappointed. You would have loved to have it. You know, when you're not so convenient, when nobody can do what you can do, then you're not irreplaceable. What do I mean by that? Everybody can't find their replacement to move up to the next responsibility to get more responsibility. Yeah, I said it. Find your replacement. Well, why would I do that? Why would I do that? And they would want me because not too many people are looking to find their replacement to move up. Too many people are looking to hold on to this. My manager spot. You ain't going to never get it. You have to kill me dead till I give up my E5. No, because I ain't looking to go to E6. They career specialists. I'm just being honest. So when you make yourself less convenient, but more consistent and being you and finding people to replace you because you're looking to move up, that's when you move up. That's it. Yeah. And that's, that's, yeah, that's, again, the world opening up. You opening up your world. This Hey, man, I didn't know where the show was going to go. I told you I had nothing. This is what God got me to say today. Hey, well, um, hey, look, it's RJ, man. That that, uh, that, that right there uh, hit, a, hit a lot of points that uh, between last week and this week that's been gone, of course, at work. And, um, like, uh, like, man, it really just now uh, just hit, hit, hit me head. That's why I've been so quiet because, man, it, it, it really touched me right there. Well, so. glory to what I call God because, man – I'm telling you, I, I could not, I'm dead serious. I could not take credit for that, but in my arrogance, in my flesh and thinking I'm something like Mike Tyson said, I know I'm nothing. If I believe in God, he could poof, I'm gone. Right. Yeah. For real, for real. I'm just the realist. That's me. I'm not, I'm not the smartest dude academia, but I'm intelligent. I get it. And I don't think a lot of people get it. And for me, it's just all about sharing like what I, what he give me, what I see at that time. Like the most important time and moment in your life is that moment that you have. It can end tonight. What's the last thing that you said to him? I don't care if I ain't talked to you in two weeks, three weeks. When I talk to you, I got you. And if he give me something, I'm going to give it. I have to get comfortable with doing that. That's why I'm going to sell uh, State Farm Insurance. Two things. So people can tell me no, and I can get out of my feelings and get comfortable with that because I know what I'm really looking to do is give back. I really want to learn and understand, and I will life insurance because i understand that most individuals don't know their life insurance or don't understand it i haven't looked it up it's a feeling and god talks to me and i know it because what happens is just like everything else we're indoctrinated into what we need to do we just get in life insurance from our job and we don't read it we don't understand it we don't know how it pays out and that's when people are left with bills and debt i know it just went through some of it because you don't understand it so if I learn it and I understand that, I also understand that it's families and there's individuals 
who's changed generations by the way they set up their life insurance policies to pay off everything, getting million dollar life insurance policies when they're young, taking care of those things. Because here's the thing, whether you like it or not, you leave something behind. So why not learn how to leave something behind that can set them up? They're going to grieve. Why not grieve or understand how this thing called money works? It's currency. It's a tool. It just moves around. Work smarter, not harder. I'm going to die. I'm 45 years old. The odds of me probably making three, four hundred million in the next 20 years, they could be good, but they could be bad as well. But the odds of me putting an insurance policy on a healthy 45 year old body at a certain cost to ensure for real, for real, that my family going to have this amount. Oh, yeah. I'll figure that out. And then when you tie it all up yeah, and you start learning about certain things and writers and deals and how you can protect your family now. So if something happened to you, for me, I know as a man, at least financially, my wife and my family never be good for real, for real. I yeah. can get, If I can get that part in order, I can build the other stuff. That's the, that's the, that's what I want right there. So it's like, I'm learning and growing in a different way. And I think sales is going to put and structure this that I do. So when I bring it back, I'll know how to package it and present myself in the business way too. Because when I say 501c3, I know you're going to have to have different conversations with individuals. So it's all interesting to me. Are you giving me the finger like, hold on, or that's a good scratch? Like, oh, you getting that? Uh, that was a good scratch. <laughs> so, Anyhow, man, it's um, I was saying the world is opening up. Are you ready? And I, and I said it earlier. I just look like the world is the world that God is giving to you. The universe is giving to you. Yo, whatever your higher power is, man. Well, if my conversation ain't for everybody, but I'm always knowing that it's touching somebody. I don't mean that in the arrogant way. That's why I say, you know, uh. Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Big Sarge, larger and in charge of my one and only self, looking to discover my greatest internal wealth, taking myself up off the shelf. I'm just giving you what I got and, and telling you, you got it. That's why we hear all of us today, me and Whiskey Charlie putting ourselves on the line, too. We ain't perfect, but we fighting through. You got something you you supposed to do. And sometimes you have to listen to people when they tell you they see it in you and get comfortable with accepting your flowers too. And then you have to slow down and see it in you. It's one of the hardest things to do is for us to give ourselves some recognition and hold ourselves accountable when we're not doing right. That's why we have to have somebody else to say we're doing it for. But if you're not doing it for yourself, you only do it for somebody else for so long till you're tired of doing it. <laughs> like, that's just how it go. Tom Brady unretired. And my in my thought and feeling and process, I was shocked when he when he retired, but I was happy that he did because I'm fine with him going out at any time he chooses because he's had a great career. But when he came back, I understood it because I feel like he more so quit for his wife than he did for him. He quit for his family. That's a decision every man makes. It's something that he gives up at a time that he does not want to give it up for his family. And then he gets to go back to it or not. And he probably went home and they had conversations and they didn't want him home. It's like coming home from a deployment. You go on deployment, you go on a, a National Guard month, two month thing, a three week thing. And your wife been at home running things and taking care of business. And then you come home and you attempting to implement your stuff. It causes a little ruckus. They want you to go back on deployment for a minute. Yeah. That's what happened with Tom Brady. He like, I ain't want to retire anyway. Giselle put him back out. So he got <laughs> to come play again. Yeah. That's hey, what I thought it is. But you need that. That's where his world is at. Just like you said, your wife told you, hey, babe, I ain't saying you got to quit, but maybe, you know, do you see what's going on? Yeah. Because we need that. Because that's part of our world. That's part of our world. Infantry was part of our world. It was it was just individuals who was just there for the, uh, for me, I was just there for self-fulfillment to see if I could do what they said was tough. Would it really teach me something to survive? I had some great moments, but I had some let down too. I was expecting some more. I'm just going to be real with myself. So 
but it was um it was interesting man but hey the world is how we see it right now today not yesterday not five years from now none of it matters i realized in the last five years from the time i really started speaking in 2017 within that five years my mother and my father have passed away and i have a broken relationship with two of my siblings but also in that time frame i've remarried my high school sweetheart moved back to texas completed an associate's degree started mr peen as a dba under my llc ejs independent delivery i've spoken at several places i've created and passed out over 5,000 inspirational cards. Um, I've worked for ACC. I've spoken at ACC. I've won countless awards speaking in my speaking group. There's a lot of good things that I've done too. But I realize it's the adversity and it's the obstacles that grow you. It's everything that happens in your world. Every last thing that's happened in your world up until this point has brought you to the point that you are. When you understand that your words that you speak creates your world, then you start to change your world. That's why the army brain fed you speak in the three to one odds. We win, we own the night, queen the battle. That's why you say those things. It's massaging your brain. As Dr. Bruce Lipton say, the subconscious mind is programmed between the ages of zero to seven. What does that mean? Somebody has given you your world. This is what the world view is for you. So between those ages so what did the army do if your subconscious mind is programmed between the ages of zero to seven and you live out 90 percent of your life like that unless you do two things hypnosis or repetition what does the army do the army gives you repetition to break you and to rebuild you into what they want you to do have a whole different view and it's a perfect system because they do it with everybody else around you we shave your head you talk the same language you don't have no telephone no outside contact you become the company you keep i build this system in you we're gonna lose a few but for the vast majority they're gonna follow the system and it's the way of the world what you have to do is come in and you have to create your own system within the huge system you have to start to define your world based on what you speak just like you define the world for your family where you're going to be financially the land that you wanted to be why you got a generator why you learn to do certain things that you do you spoke those things into your world now you're like okay i want to see my world from a different view why because you're in a different state too but hey you look like you might want to say something i don't know that's just me oh, no. No, I don't know. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm learning right now, big. That goes for everybody for PTSD, even with me. Listen, thank you, Jesus. This is all my world. This is all me. But I, I, I sometimes think about how other people see me. Some people know me as from, or I think some people know me as from back in the hood, Seven Mile E, the kid that dropped out of high school. Some people know me from the army as. Specialist Smith, Corporal Smith, Big Sarge Smith E. Some people know me as Ethan Smith, speaking E. All parts are me. This is my energy that I that I enjoy to give because this is my world view. But we worry how people view us based on what other people have said to you. You get to paint your view based on the words that I speak to you. When I hang up and I'm done, that's it, I'm through. I can't worry about what somebody else's view is. All I got to do is, am I connected with what my higher power told me to do? It's like when you out on mission, you the point, man, you looking down your rifle, you got the best view. You have to be asking yourself, am I willing to take this chance on this day? Am I willing to pull this trigger? Am I willing to pull this trigger and spend this money on I don't know. Back in the day, guys come from deployment. They buy new cars when they couldn't afford to. You buy, like we talked about, beer and drinks and smoke when you don't need to. You know, you making those decisions that don't help you. But then when you start to get a different view, you start working out a little bit more for you. You start reading a little bit more for you. You do less drinking for you. Nice shades, Top Gun. Thanks, Kibby. What's going on, son? Oh, <laughs> hey, Sean Connor. I apologize, Kibby. You, I love you, man. But anyhow, um, 
But no, that's what it is. It's changing our view. And I and I had to do it for me too. And I'm doing it every single day because I look at it like this. I don't ever want to consider myself as getting old. You know, I, I'm aging like a like a fine wine, like a fine automobile. Now I'm 45 years old. What are you? 35 whiskey, Charlie? 33. Yeah, so you're 33. Most people would probably think you're older than me if they just looked at our physical features that they seen. You got a nice field of gray. I got no gray and barely a beard or anything. And we can say that means multitude of things. Everybody has something interesting, right? Yep. But it all is based on what we see. I can feel like it's over for me. I'm old. I can't do this no more. You can feel like it's old for you. But here's what I understand. People respect and admire old because it's stood the test of time and it still has an immaculate view if you take care of it prove a point to you two cars i line them up right next to you one is built in 19 after 1992 muscle car one is built between one is built before 1992 back to 19 52 camaro pontiac whatever your view if i line them up next to you which one you think gonna be more appealing to you to me yeah to you let's say to my to me in my opinion i the old the older car though to me I'm think I'm so happy that you said that because if you didn't I was gonna be like God thank you Lord what else <laughs> well no that's my point exactly. As a people, it's all that shit you butter your body with every night in our bunk. That's why you look good. <laughs> That's right. it's, all that you know, it's all that deep. It's all that deep. You know, I had to, yeah, take care of that melanin and all, man. I was putting that uh that uh Palmer's cocoa butter lotion on, man. Yeah, man. I was keeping it right, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's nah, that that's that military deep that you put on keeping the skins <laughs> off. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, man, I lost my point of view. Anywho, but no, uh, what was I saying, Whiskey Charlie? We're talking about the vehicles. Yeah, so looking at the older vehicles. Most people admire the older vehicles. If you see a, a, just for example, for me, if somebody said a 57 Chevy, you have an idea. If you yeah. live in California, I said a 6'4 Impala, you know what I'm talking about. If you live in Texas, I say a slab, you're not thinking of 1992 anything. You thinking of old school Cadillac or something yeah. wrong, something big first, you know? And when you see the older cars that's been taken care of, they age like we hear about a fine wine, a fine bourbon, a fine whiskey. Charlie. Huh? I said Charlie. You said you said fine whiskey. I said Charlie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. That's good. Exactly. Uh. So, you know, not getting old. I don't want to see it as I'm ever getting old. I'm just aging because you continue to grow like you're defying the odds of time. Tom Brady is defying the odds of time. Yeah, it, it's going to come a time when his time is up. But right now, he's done. He's doing something that no one else was able to do. And now they're talking about pliability. You just got to know how to age right. Your body can withstand a lot. You've made it through combat. We've literally made it through combat. Even Kibby, I had to protect him every night. He said it down there in the what's the name in the comments every night. I had to protect so he would <laughs> cry himself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, man. You we absolutely right, man. We we yeah, old is a figment of our imagination. It's a thought, it's a process. Yeah, we are aging, but time is known by man, not by not by <laughs> I didn't know you could get a finger on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm so old in that sense. I'm showing my my age, and I didn't know that you could get a finger on Facebook. Kibby, you would know that. You probably learned that that uh you probably learned that at your office job. I know you're like an office manager, so you probably know all the computer lingo. Douche. 
<laughs> You're such a thug attempting to be a nice suburban white guy. I know you're a thug, Kibby. I love you, though, brother. <laughs> oh, man. I did not know you could do that. But anyhow, your world is opening up for you, man. So when you look at an old antique car, you see that thing, and we admire. We're inspired by it because it's weathered the storm. It's like looking at a couple who's been married for 25, 35, 50 years. You've you've weathered the storm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want to get old. You want to age well. You want to, yeah, you are more of a thug than I am. You was born in Flint, but you didn't live in Flint. <laughs> <laughs> it was made right like in Waterford. Oh, don't Eminem me. You might have crossed the tracks, but I don't, I don't know where you lived at, to be honest with you. You could have you could have slummed it and um for from in, in the hood in Flint for a minute. Stop your week. What? I don't know what you're talking about, man. My week seven mile shit. Seven mile is just where I'm from. I actually come from a decent neighborhood, I think. I've seen some worse ones, and mine wasn't the 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 worst one ever, but I've seen some very interesting things that I just thought was normal. But yeah, anyhow. The world is opening up. I don't live on Seven Mile no more. I live in your neighborhood, the suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> and my neighbor is named Karen. And <laughs> Anyhow, man, it's always fun going back and forth for Kibby. He's taking me home even when I lived in the hood for real. I lived in the Brightmore. That was way more hood than where I grew up at. I was like, woo wee. I think he was in that red Monte Carlo that he had. <laughs> I liked the Monte Carlo, but at the same time, it was the ugliest Monte Carlo body they had because I was an old school Monte Carlo bottle. I mean, Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo body. No, I won't. I take that back. That wasn't the ugliest Monte Carlo body they had. That was the more octagon shape one, the big body like a racing NASCAR one. The yeah. ugliest one they had was the narrow one. It was like a little sleek bullet or whatever. Yeah. But anyhow, yeah, man, the world is opening up. So in order for us to help anybody else grow, we have to continue open up too. And uh, that's just the view that I have for me to you. And I, and I, and I listen to your words that you say to me, too, just like you have your view. And it's all a part of growth, man. That's what I'm about. You know, it's all a part of growth because at the end of the day, I know I leave a legacy. I know people will remember things about me. And I know, interestingly enough, as I may be, within 90 days, people won't be talking about me. That's just the reality. And it's not that it's a disrespectful thing or that they don't love me. It's just that the living continue living because that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and, you know, and don't cry for me my wife no and listen y'all i'm letting y'all know i ain't going nowhere no time soon i got too much work to do so i believe but my wife no ain't no funeral for big star just a party cremate the body throw that thing in the backyard if you want to take the money have a good time i'm telling you i got a view i'm gonna be like the old viking or something like i figure by the time i die i'm gonna have a piece of property maybe i'll put a lake on it and maybe I have them build the scaffolding up to it and shoot an arrow with the fire up there and let the body burn. And y'all go take off on a plane or a boat and go somewhere and have a party. Cause I'm, I'm, you know, don't go, don't cry for me. Like I had a good time. I'm enjoying life. People got to learn how to enjoy life. If they start to speak their world into existence, like we did in the army, they trained us to believe that we could beat anything, especially if we had three to one odds. It wasn't no, you couldn't do that. Yeah. There wasn't no you couldn't do that. I don't remember all the terminology from the army because I just kind of separated that part from my mind when I separated from the army, to be honest, because I've grown on to a different stage, but I understand some of some of the things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm at a different stage in my life, but I don't disrespect that stage. So I don't know all the words, but I know it's some core principles in that leadership that the army put in me that helped me to continue to grow like the nco creed that i was looking at the other day so man we we get to paint our picture the way we want to and it it never ends until it ends and there's no such thing as too late 
It happened in the time it's supposed to. We just have to be willing to accept that. Got to take responsibility and accountability for what we spoke into existence. I'm only sitting here with my wife and kids right now because when I was divorced, and I've said this before, and back in Michigan, I spoke it into existence, and I started working my ass off to get to it. No different than the associate's degree, but I've, I've fallen down too, and I missed the mark and not speaking the right things for me, and then some of the old things become your reality. You start smoking or drinking too much and making excuses for where you should be growing to. Like becoming a store manager or becoming a top speaker, that should be a goal in the date and the deadline for you. And maybe you don't hit it within a year or two of that, but you know you keep it in right there in the view. It's not, it's not if they want to give it to me or if I'm gonna get it, it's when. <laughs> like if yeah. what is yeah. if, dog? <laughs> like, I got you, yeah. Yeah, sure. so anyhow, man. That's the world is opening up. Your world is opening up. I was out doing lift today because I love being with people and I wanted to make some extra money. And it's South by Southwest. It was St. Patrick's Day. The world is opening up. And I know Texas was one of the first places and it actually felt good to see people out because connecting with other individuals is what we do. Yeah, this is sweet. Technology is sweet. But don't yeah. don't don't let them get you so focused on the camera. That, that you not focus on the person that's in the picture, in the frame. Don't let yeah. them get you so focused on everybody else that you not focused on you because you in the view too. You know, so your world is opening up for you. It's jumping season. That's what he told me to tell you to do. You got to jump to the next best version of you, whatever that look like for you. And if this message ain't for you, hey, that's cool. You wasn't supposed to get it. But whoever this was supposed to get it today, I'm glad it went your way. I ain't got nothing else to say, Whiskey Charlie. So you can close out. <laughs> hey, hey, you're good, big star. Hey, man. Hey, like you said, the uh, world is opening up. It's uh, it's all based on what you want to do with it, though. You guys, hey, it's it's you. You, you make that uh, you make that decision. You you be the best the best version of you, as Big Star says out there. Make the best version of yourself. Put your footprint on on whatever situation you're in, and make your own. Uh, make the steps. Make the steps to get to where you want to go. It's, a, it's all about you. It's don't, don't, you can't blame anybody else except for yourself, man. Hey, but you, you do it. You, uh, you've got uh, the world is just so big and there's so many things that you can do. Uh, do what you, and also one of the things I also like to say is do what you like. You can't just go out there, you know, and, you know, just just accept anything. Hey, Big Sarge went out there and chased his dream with the speaking thing. He did that. And now he's, now he's seen another vision where he can still do his vision, but also help people with something that, uh, he found out that uh, people will also need and, and he experienced it with himself. So sometimes the things that you experience is something that you can uh, be at a leap with and uh, maybe find a, a, uh, a career with Home Depot. I never even thought I was going to be with Home Depot as long as I was. I literally went to the store when I first got the job. I went to the store to get a board for a beer pong table. In 2009, and then as soon as I went into the store, talked to a guy there and got on there and never thought I was going to make a career out of it. And now I'm here as assistant manager and, uh, and able to keep my wife at home and to take care of our girls. One of the, one of the biggest dreams I ever had is when I was younger, I always said that I want, I want to be able to make enough money. So my wife be able, be able to stay home and take care of my, my girls or my kids. I said at the time, because nobody's expecting to have two girls. Uh, but I love both of them to death and I wouldn't want to change that, uh, for the world. So, and you just gotta, you gotta chase your dreams and, uh, stay, stay committed and, be persistent and stay on top of you guys. Gibby's got two girls too. Yeah. Y'all girl dads. It's because we hit it so hard, we had knocked the balls off of it. I got four girls, one boy. I always looked at it as I had all those girls because I was putting all the work in and people was being lazy. You got a little boy when the other individual is doing most of the work. And most of the time, in my case, I did most of the work because I had little boy trust issues and I want to let that part of myself go. And she probably make me scream a bloody murder scream, you know, like the women can do to you. So <laughs> I always controlled the flow. But anyhow, before we go, um, let me read these comments from Kibby. He says, so my daughter joined the Silver Air Patrol. It's like the Air Force, J-R-O-T-C. Yeah, I've seen those pictures. Shout out to that. So Silver Air Patrol, 
J R O T C. Okay, cool. Um, I thought it was super dumb compared to what we went through, but what I learned was times are different and things change. Absolutely right. And I probably think it. I probably would have thought it was dumb too, based on what we went through. But then I did do J R O T C for not really, but I had the class at for high school. So okay. Um, what they do though is make these kids put the phone down and learn basic military discipline. I probably need to put my son in there, boy, because some days I'd be ready. Well, <laughs> Mr. Peen don't be working. I'd be Mr. Mr. Negative Nape. That's Mr. Negative and every positive. I tell you what, to be honest with y'all, the other day. I punched a hole in my wall like a week ago. I had so much rage. He was going back and forth with me. I'm like, ah, I, I'm dead serious. Big Sarge was And that, and that wall didn't do shit to you. Hey, you can go to Home Depot. I can show you how to patch that up, bro. Oh, yeah, I know. They got that little stuff in there. You can, what's the name, and put it on there. But anyhow, <laughs> so, yeah, discipline. That's Thank you, Kibby. Anyhow, discipline. He said what they do is make these kids put the phone down and learn basic military discipline. It was actually refreshing. She, This is at 13. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Everybody need a little structure in their life, and the military help you get that right. As a parent, I think it would be knowing who my child my child is, who my son is, I would definitely probably, I don't know, he's a thinker. He like to use his brain. He don't like to do dumb stuff, but he would like to do the military for the adventurous side. I yeah. can see that. He likes to call a duty. I've taken him to play airsoft. He likes to airsoft, so he could do it for the adventurous side, and he's smart enough to understand I could use it to go to school to get my mechanic on what he's really going to do. Like He would use it the right way, but as a parent, <clears throat> That would make me a little bit nervous, I guess, knowing what I went through. You know what I'm saying? When I, knowing what I did, but I would respect it. And I would understand it because I also know the military would give him some structure. It would help him learn. It would give him a little bit of discipline more than some of them will have. And it will, it will put them miles and miles ahead of individuals who just went to high school, went to college, and went right into the working class. Especially if you're like in the Navy or the Air Force, somewhere where you're actually getting outside of the country, not just the Army or the Marines. For real, for real. But anyhow, 13 is a great age to start it because you could be doing something totally different. It's a young lady at my uh, place of work, of employment, that um, I mean, her mom, it's a young lady who mom works there, but she is in ROTC as well. And she's getting ready to join, I believe, the Texas State Guard and get scholarships to school. And she's going to go into, um, I think, like forensic specialist, forensic scientist for like, a, for like the DEA or FBI. Like she's got lofty, lofty goals. And she's been doing some, I've seen her doing some pretty powerful interesting things to be a teenager so it's yeah. pretty dope hey just like jr jrtc like you're saying that that uh also another thing that uh put youth in is also a trade school mm -hmm. trade schools yeah i mean i mean you gotta think you know especially the way like you were talking about earlier with technology and everything else these days everybody's you know uh is busy in technology i understand it's gonna get real important in the farther in the future as it gets closer but uh, to me, also, everybody watching these phones trying to do, you know, anything and everything else. Uh, but trade schools, I mean, you know, plumbers, electricians, carpenters and stuff like that. There, You can make some killer money off of it. Yeah, and my son, he likes working with his hands. He wants to he's going to be a mechanic. So um, what we're getting ready to do is. Next year out here, you know, in the next year he'll be going to what, what we would consider vocational school, Votech, when I was in high school. So half a day with regular classes, other half with automotive. And then I'm also getting ready to sign him into dual enrollments where he'll be going to ACC and earning an associate's degree while completing his last two years of high school. And I'm going to get him into the automotive program there so he can come out with the automotive degree and get the hands on through the vocational school. So I'm gonna kind of double dip and then send him off into a trade school from there if he needs to and go that route. Cause yeah, yeah it, it would be pointless for him to go to a four year university to get a degree in something mechanics. And that's not what he want to do to manage a damn dealership shop. Yeah, 
right? So, <laughs> but anyhow, man, that's the vision he has for himself. Uh, he said she did a drill weekend, no phone, whole time. Isn't that weird that no phone for a weekend is a challenge nowadays? Absolutely. It was a time yeah. where phone got you smoked. Uh huh. I got you smoked yep. big time. I, I, it was a time where a phone wasn't even a thing. When I got in, you was getting phone numbers and you had a phone tree on phone numbers with a call log. You got that thing sent an email sometimes. Yep. You had no, I remember writing phone numbers down in the notebook. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about that same thing today. I was like, yeah, they're so lucky because I yeah, remember. Man. Hey, especially if you're trying to holler at somebody and you lose the phone number and you're like, oh, fuck, I don't know how to get a hold of her or, hey, I got to meet up with her, you know? Mm-hmm. Couldn't do it. Mm-mm. Couldn't do it. <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. That's interesting. That's good. That structure, structure young. That's the that's the thing I think our kids, no, man, you're great, man. I thank you. That's what we like, that interaction. That interaction is what is what pulls out the conversation. So don't ever be sorry for extending our time. You know I could talk forever. It's oh. cool. Yeah. <laughs> it works out great. That's my gift. Once I really figure out how to bottle it up and present it as a product, then you'd be like, man, Sergeant Smith, you know we homeboys. I got to get some time with you. I'll be like, my office hours are now. Nah, I'm just joking with you. But no, that's pretty cool. So yeah. All right. We'll let you go. I'll let y'all go. We can end the show. Whiskey Charlie, you got something to say? Nope. Good to go, Big Sarge. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful night, man. It has been Grunt Speak, Speak Grunt. Free, relax your mind. Let's go time. Peace. Boo, boo.